Welcome to the Wilson Center's Middle East program, Art in Mena series. My name is Brooke Sherman, and today I'm joined by Bahar Sabsavari, an Iranian visual artist who's now based in New York. She runs an art studio and has worked and studied in Iran, Europe, and the United States. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for having me. So why don't you start just by telling us a little bit more about your artwork and your career. So when did you first decide to pursue art professionally? Sure, um, I was always fascinated by art, especially painting since I was a kid, like so many other artists, uh, but specifically as an Iranian woman uh, who was born after the revolution, Islamic revolution in Iran, and growing up during the Iran-Iraq war, um, I lived the duality and the contradictions of Iranian society. So uh, this paradox um, that I have experienced as a woman um, caught between the restrictions of the Islamic cultural regime and everyday existence of uh, living as a woman in a modern time, um, all these things um, just gave me the idea of uh, doing um, self-portraits and talking about identity. Because when uh, 20 years ago I left Iran for studying art in France, uh, making self-portraits uh, became my visual diary, kind of a ritual. Every day um, I tried to make it you know, a self portrait of myself to uh, know myself better and talk to and connect with other people um, outside of my country with different culture, with different language. So that was a kind of um, connection tool for me uh, to connect with other people around me. Uh, so I started by doing self portraits to express my feelings, beliefs, um, talking about my values, talking about my cultural background. So um, all of these things were really helpful to know myself, to know what I'm doing, you know, and I'm still doing self-portraits, but not like every day, you know. So my journey for doing art started by this but during I mean throughout these 20 years that I, I was living outside of Iran um, it's like my half of my life um, was in Iran and the half of other spent in I mean outside of Iran so um, I could see the changes that I mean in my artworks um, and in myself of course uh, so it's a very interesting um, depiction of um, the passing of time for me, not just an artwork, you know. I'm sure through the self-portraits, you could kind of track the evolution of where you were in each stage of life. And I'm sure the person who left Iran was is very different from who you are today. And through the self-portraits, it's almost documentation of your growth and discovery as a person. Um, and I know that um, in perhaps since you first started with self-portraits, you now um, experiment with other types of painting and depictions and um, over the course of your career, research and science have also become um, important parts of your work. So can you expand on that part of your practice and when you first decided to um, incorporate other types of expression into your work outside of just self-portraits? At a time, just I'm thinking about talking about something more general and global rather than just you know, discovering myself or um, my cultural background. So um, I was decided, um, um, I've been decided to uh, focus more on um, the concept of fact versus myth or fiction, fact versus fiction. 
uh, which is a global thing. And it's not just related to, I mean, a specific country or specific religion, you know. Um, I was trying to talk about the endless and unstoppable fighting between um, fact, we can say science, with uh, versus like um, human made stories like religions, like all the conspiracy theories, everything that human just made it, you know what I mean? Uh, and with that, they, con they try to control other people. So I, for this um, concept, I started to use uh, like mythological symbols of Persian culture or even from Roman or Greek culture um, uses as um, the fiction part of this concept. And I use dinosaurs as a symbol of um, the science and the truth and the fact, you know. So I made some pictures of the fight scene of dinosaurs with some monsters and made up animals, you know. Um, that was very, um, I was enjoying a lot to do that because um, it helped me to discover more about religions, more about mythologies, stories from so many years ago. Um, that was kind of like a discovering and a research, not just, you know, uh, make some new artworks about this subject. And um, I made lots of researches about wildlife, like about um, uh, natural histories. So all of these kind of things just helped me a lot to know the world rather than outside of myself, you know. Um, and I'm still doing, I mean, in, in my new um, works, uh, my focus is on this subject, but specifically about uh, environmental changes and environmental issues, which is one of the most important issues in Iran right now, actually. And it's one of the reasons that the protesters are outside and they want to um, bring the attention about all these injustices, environmental injustices, and um, when the government doesn't care about uh, this big, and important issues and ignore it uh, and try to um, control people with other things rather than, you know, very um, crucial and fundamental uh, problems in the society. So I use cheetahs as my, it's, it's kind of like self image of myself because I was born in a small city in Iran which the cheetahs leave right now. I mean, around, not in the city, of course. Uh, but um, uh, cheetahs are, um, are endangered in Iran. And they, um, we only have like less than 30 cheetahs in whole Asia, not only in Iran. In other countries, they stay extinct and we have only 30 left just in Iran. So I use cheetahs as a self image or of myself um, who, who is fighting for his future, for her future. Um, and um, I use this animal as a symbol of the resistance of the human uh, for making change in the world for having a better future for for everyone what a powerful use of symbolism that you've developed um first looking back at mythology um which i i think is interesting because the the first kind of topic you had mentioned that you were exploring fact versus fiction is such a relevant debate today. And it's interesting to me that you turned back to history and turned back to mythology 
Um, and I'm sure there are a lot of um, traditional stories that really depict the same power dimensions that are, again, still relevant in today's society. And then how um, you also looked back to, to Iran, to your home country, and looked at the issues um, that protesters and other people are facing there, especially when it comes to the environmental component and incorporated um, such realism and symbolism and you know, research and history all into your work. So um, it sounds uh, like a very compelling and also important work that you are putting out. Um, and I, I really do want to get to the protests in Iran, but before I ask that, I'm, I'm curious, um, what the audience reception is to, to this work, um, especially considering how many themes and even charged topics that you cover in the work? I, I mean, when I'm creating some artworks or doing some paintings or drawing, um, the first thing that I'm thinking about, it's about, okay, I'm doing this for myself first, but I'm sure uh, there are a lot of different um, visions in the world, of course, and they're gonna depict whatever they want from this artwork or from this uh, painting. So I leave it to them to decide about what is thinking about it, but the reaction of the uh, the people is really interesting because they find the symbols and they ask the questions. What is, what does it mean? What do you want to say? And when I explain to them, the symbol means that and the other parts uh, I was trying to tell this, uh, this conversation helped me in the first place to um, learn how people react about my artwork and sometimes i can see more than a more like you know meanings and um symbols um more i mean um i can learn from the viewers about my artwork and this is amazing and people are different you know um sometimes they they can get the sense of the picture. Sometimes they have their own um, explanation or um, experience towards that picture. And I think art is all about that. That's made, I mean, um, try to um, make, I mean, make people to ask questions about themselves, about, the work about the artist about everything so it's kind of a mysterious like process to me yeah, i'm sure it's interesting to watch people interact with your work as you mentioned it really starts with an introspective um position where you're putting it out for yourself and for um your own learning and then to watch audiences pick up on the subtleties and the symbolism and the themes behind it and make you think um, even deeper about your work is just continues the the growth and the learning that you were you were mentioning. Um, so pivoting as um, you had touched on the protests in Iran. Um, so I'm wondering if you can start just by reflecting on the developments in Iran from the perspective of being part of the diaspora. Yeah, um, this movement protest, or I prefer to say revolution, because it's, it's a very, very different kind of movement um, after revolution that I've experienced. I'm not in Iran, but I can see what's happening there. Um, because when I was in Iran, um, we had this kind of movements, protests, but they were totally different from this time. Uh, it's different because um, the new generation are more involved. So this is the first difference, I think. Women are in the first row of this 
protests, which is something very, very like impressive for all of us. Um, because I think in Iranian culture, they never accept whatever government or regime uh, dictated to them, you know, they always find a way to say no in different ways. I remember when I was at school in Iran, uh, we, we, we experienced, we had a, a dual life, like at school in the society and the other life inside our houses with, with, with our families. And, and the go I think the government knows about this uh, different lifestyles of people in Iran. Um, but as long as they show the word, everything is fine outside of their houses, you know, and we have the, the control on people, they're okay. But this time, I think the protests, this kind of like, um, this agreement came out of their houses. So, and they show that we are not happy, we want a fundamental change, a regime change or change everything. We, they want freedom. So um, we always wanted freedom, but not clear like this time. I think this, they, their message to the world is very clear and it's really, um, it's, it's powerful. It's a powerful message. It's woman life freedom is something really clear and powerful and uh, they know what they want this time. So it's very impressive. I, and the, the other thing is for the first time, I think uh, we can see the unity between Iranian outside of Iran and inside. So we feel we are in Iran every day since the protest just started. Every day when I wake up, I feel I should um, I should support them. I should be part of this um, revolution, you know. And we are very, really, very like uh, hopeful about this movement and this revolution. Have you found ways to participate even from New York? Um, I just, uh, I, the only thing that I could do since starting the, these uh, movements, I participated in every like, you know, protests in New York. Uh, and it's amazing because every single Saturday since the movement started in Iran, we are outside. We are together, we talk to each other. I know lots of new people which were living here for a long time, but we didn't know each other. So um, yeah, you can see the unity between all Iranian outside and outside with inside. So it's something amazing. It is very heartwarming when you see other nations or other people from other countries different culture, different languages. They are just, um, they, they, they got the message of Iranian um, young generation about we want democracy, we want democracy, we want a democratic uh, government. We can't take this um, dictatorship anymore. And I'm sure everyone in the world wants democracy and freedom so they feel okay we all are part of this movement we could we can be like me i i'm sure um of course i am an american citizen iranian american and i vote i i, I voted for um every elections in america and i care about it because it's important anything happen in this country uh can affect other things around the world. So I think a free Iran in the Middle East can help other Middle Eastern country to, um, to get closer to 
you know, best, um, best future in their countries. So it is very important, this um, seeing all the supports from different countries, different artists, from different um, nations, and it's very heartwarming for all of us. Um, on that point about the um, response from the art community, have you seen um, protest art or artists in Iran using their practice to also participate in the demonstrations? Yeah, um, this is the thing that I can observe every day is the quantity of the artworks that comes out from Iran and outside of Iran from different people, even non-artists do some artworks for this movement, um, non-Iranian artists um, support this movement by their artworks or just um, sending a message, simply just sending a message, we support you, we hear you, we see you. Um, and the beautiful thing that I try to share every day on my Instagram page is to share the videos and um, the artworks, uh, which people in Iran doing every day as a peaceful kind of protest in the streets every day. Because, you know, um, wearing a hijab in Iran is, um, is an obligation and it's, it's part of the law. So when you see the young generation and even our generation, the people uh, in my, from my generation just goes outside without the hijab and give flowers or chocolate to other people, to, um, you know, to religious people, to everyone in the street, to the kids, to everyone, just to ask them indirectly, please come with us and um, let's just talk about this change together but in a very artistic and poetic way which is very beautiful and it's very powerful and i think it's um the power of art that can make change you know um and i think this generation um found this way as a very like powerful tool in their protests even the slogans are really creative. They are very funny and they use the sense of humor, sure, dark humor, but they are very creative. I'm amazed everywhere, every day I feel like, oh my God, they are great. They do, I mean, they know what they're doing. They are, they, they are very, ins I mean, um, they inspire me a lot every day. So, yeah. And that gets to an earlier point about what's so unique about this latest wave of protest in Iran is the generation that is coming to the streets and what they've grown up with, and that is access to the international community and um, hearing from their parents what their childhood was like in Iran. And all of this contributes to their their hopes and their desires for a freer society but it also adds if you will tools in their toolbox for finding ways to demonstrate whether that's using social media or connecting with people outside of iran or using art and, and new forms of art and, and slogans and humor um not that we haven't seen that in iran before but i think to your point the way is that um the the um, kind of the magnitude of, of people who are using all of these different um, resources and, and mediums is very interesting to see and very, very powerful. Um, so just kind of to wrap up, I'm curious if you've turned to art to express your emotions or um, also participate yet um, on, in these demonstrations. Sure. Um, I. I've been started a new series of works um, about the, the, 
I mean, I'm trying to show the bravery of women and men, both of them are very brave, are very creative, and um, they're, they're, they are amazing and they inspire all of us outside and inside of Iran. So um, uh, I'm trying just to make some works to use the cheetah as a symbol of hope for you know the better future um, and showing this new generation, especially women, and mix these two concepts together. I'm draw. I mean, I made I made some paintings um since the demonstration i mean since the, this uh, this movement um but every day i feel like uh, sometimes you need more time to digest what's happening um and get inspired more than just you know create a new work but my uh my head every day is full of images of um, of making new works about this movement and revolution. And I, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm still do, I'm still working on it. But I finished some paintings. Uh, but I need that like more time to, uh, you know, uh, make it more. Uh, I don't know how can I explain, but yeah, this is this is too much changes in just one like one month, fifty days for all of us, um, and we're trying to digest, you know, uh, how can we help? How can we express ourselves about all these things that's happening in Iran? But we're very help hopeful about about everything. And I, I think it's the first time for me personally. Well, I'm sure this movement will inspire artists and other people for years and generations to come. So thank you so much for joining the series. We will certainly look out for the artwork when it does start to come together um, from you. And um, thank you so much again for your time. Thank you. Thank you so much. Brett.